Welcome to Hack Chat live from Black Hat. I was supposed to be at Black Hat and welcome to Hack Chat live okay. from Black Hat. Okay. I was supposed to be I was supposed to be out there, but I got sick on Saturday. Sunday I took a COVID test. I was negative for COVID, but I did have a flu and I was feeling great yesterday, but the climate we in you you can't really take any chances, but I still am doing the live show. I still have the guests. They're committed. My man, the first guest we have, Matt Stevenson. Thank you, sir, for joining. I'm so happy you're at the booth. I couldn't take a risk. I wanted to go over there and hang out with you. We got a lot to talk about. So yeah, first, introduce here, yourself, Matt. My man. Uh, Marco, uh, Marco man, first, first off, just thank, thank you so, so much for, for getting, getting me involved. involved. I, all, all the work that you're doing is fantastic. fantastic. So, uh, my name is Matt Stevenson. I am part of the Four Scout Technologies, Technologies team. I also uh, uh, dabble a little bit in some of this podcasting and video stuff, stuff and have been doing it for about 10 years. And when Black Hat was happening, it's like, I got to go. We got to get back out outside and see these friends. And then you and I started talking the opportunity to do this. It's However, However, we can, we can talk, talk to people, people right? right? I mean, we've yep. been doing the Zoom, Zoom thing, thing for, for a long, long time, time, but uh, we, actually we actually have real life people around us. Yeah, it's it's funny. We we were planning this. I I we first connected around two to three months ago, and we I feel like we're like brothers that that were lost for a while, and and we knew we hung around the same people, we knew the same people, and it's it was just a good vibe the first time we spoke, and man, we've been connecting weekly ever since. And, you know, we, we talk about a range of topics, right? From equipment to like computer security or everything in between. But, you know, I wanted to do this hack chat live because I knew black hat was going to be different this year. I knew, especially now with this Delta variant and a lot of people backing away that it was going to be different. You're over there. I'm hearing a lot, you know, from, from my friends over there on how it is just so weird. Give me your experience. You've been in Vegas for 24 hours. Give me your experience. Well, you said climate first, about you, know, you felt good and you wanted to come up with the climate. The climate is absolutely insane compared to years past. It was 104 degrees outside when I went into my room last night at after nine o'clock. 97 this morning when I left before nine o'clock. So uh, yeah, if you are even the tiniest bit less than 100%, just the air is gonna get you like a photo. As far as inside, it's, if you can hear, it's, there's still electricity. It is different than years past. We've had some vendors choose not to come. We've had some that just opted out as things got more intense with regard to the Delta variant. But uh, everyone that's here is psyched to be here. And it's, they're crazy respectful as far as distancing and masking and elbows instead of shaking hands and hugging and that sort of thing. Nobody's given anybody grief because they are wearing masks and everybody is wearing masks. So we all want to be here. We are doing the work that needs to be done in order to keep rules and keep everybody safe. So that's the cool thing. I think just everybody is grateful that they can come back and do these things. Now, we were talking right before we went on air and you were talking about how usually in the front where when the expo doors open you have thousands of people there waiting how many people were there when they opened the doors there, there were, were dozens, dozens and dozens, dozens of people, people waiting right, right there to get inside <laughs> yeah the added bonus, bonus though was it was, was really 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 cold, cold. So, so that's, that's the beautiful thing as opposed to when you're standing with two thousand of your closest friends waiting to get inside you've already got a good sweat you know i got a few pictures that i'm going to share I had a few friends send me some pictures. Here's a picture inside of the keynote. Now, if you remember the last five years, the keynote was held in like the stadium arena. So this is a.
And everybody, everybody's a little frightened. You know, they don't want to go to Vegas and come back and, and bring, you know, something back, Delta or even the con flu. And that was my worry. That's why I backed out the last minute, even though on Tuesday, I'm like, man, I'm going to go, you know, you have kids, the person after you that's going to be on there. He has a two month old. And I was, I was thinking of that. I'm like, man, that would be so selfish of me knowing that, you know, I feel under, I feel good, but you never know. And, and we live in a, in, in, in a time that's super different. But the reason why I wanted to bring you on and, and you have the, the, the first slot is because what we both do is create content, content, yep. not only for ourselves, content for the companies we work for. And this is a skill creating content is a skill and it takes time. And I wanted to peek or, or just ask you a few questions. And, and I wanted to peek behind the curtain on how you do things. What does it take for you to, to, to put that content together and your thought process? Wow. Uh, uh, sometimes, sometimes it's just something as silly as a current event. event. Um, I, 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 so here's a good story. story. I, I got, got super, super fortunate, fortunate a couple years, years back and landed the founder of Locked Alone Thought, co-founder, Todd Carmichael, CEO, absolutely crazy, interesting guy, because I have read an article in USA Today about a, an act of really selfless, I don't want to use the word charity, he stepped up and helped a underprivileged family in Philadelphia. And I was like, wow, what a great story. And I started reading more about the, the, the man and the company. And so, and so I just sent a blind email, email to you know, like info, info at locklock.com. I included a couple of links to my show, so that I'd love to talk more about that particular incident, about his history. And they got back to me. And I ended up doing a, like a 90-minute podcast with this incredible person who, in doing the research, I found out he hosted two adventure travel shows on the Travel Channel. Currently, or still holds the record for the fastest solo trek to the South Pole. And, and oh, by, by the way, way after, after the Haitian earthquakes, La Cologne came in and started working with the local Haitian farmers to help rebuild, get, get them, them you know, really back into production, production but in a way, way that was not in any way colonial. Like, like they, they, they came to work with, with the Haitian farmers the way they farm. The, the only, only impact, impact they wanted to leave was improving the water supply and transportation methods. Not by dropping trucks in there, but by helping, you know, build the infrastructure so they could get the beans from the farmers to the buyers. And it was just because I found an article and I reached out. And sometimes it's as simple as that. You see something and you reach out to the author or the researcher or whoever. And the worst they can do is say no or not say anything. Yeah. Nothing venture, nothing, nothing game. And then from there, it's a matter of digging and doing the research, finding out how it's applicable to what your audience is looking for. In this case, what is called you have to do with cybersecurity? Not much. But what they did was pack the infrastructure of the coffee industry in a way that helped improve it for everybody. And that just led to some great conversations. And it was our best performing episode of the year. Nice. You know, we're live. So everyone watching and tuning in, I'm looking at the chat. Submit your questions. I'll ask Matt or I'll answer him. Um, Hammer already. From from YouTube, Hema Kumar asks, "Do we have a schedule for Black Hat 2021?" I'm I'm thinking maybe you were saying 2022 or something like that. Uh, I know at Black Hat they have their the schedule up. There's the keynote that that just finished speaking. That's the picture that I just uh, showed, and we're here. We're going to be talking all things content creation. What's going on in Black Hat? You know. Hema uh, Kumar, again, you can ask all the questions you want. We're fielding them. This is live. Things are going to happen. We're going to talk about uh, different things. Um, you know, we have a jam packed show, not only on this hour, but for the, for the next three hours, we're going to be stopping, getting a coffee and going right back into a different person that I have a different guest. Tomorrow is going to be the same thing. We're lining them up. Um, yeah, but let, let, let's go back. I'm, I'm seeing all the questions alive. It is, it is so different, the climate we live in and to create content, it's very hard, right? One of the things that I wanted to do and we were thinking about doing was going to black hat and 
renting a car and doing like a, a, a coffee road show, almost like um, how uh, Mouse, Mouse used to do it, DJ Mouse, where he used to take DJs and artists. And we were thinking about doing that. But because of what's going on, it's, it's hard now. It's hard to be in person. And like I said, since COVID started, I haven't been around more than 30 people at once. You know, <clears throat> and it's weird. It's weird. I wish I was there. Like I said, I feel better now. I was under the weather. But l- let me ask you, do you have in when you're creating content, whether it's for yourself or company, is there a structure that you have per week that you post up and, and you put content out? Because a lot of I have a friend. He's very strategic on putting out content. He's very thoughtful. He'll he'll do it a week before on what he's going to put out. Do you do that? Is there anything in your mind that 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 you create content before it goes out or is just off the cuff? I've got, I've got a, process a process that is because, because I've recently, recently ch- um, moved from, from one company, company to a new one. We're kind of spinning this one, one off. And, and the Force Scout, Scout, they, they had been doing some great, great stuff, stuff, but they had not been doing the kind of uh, stuff that I did, and not have a consistent podcast or video, even though they had done this with video content. So what we've been doing on the video side is to build out regularly scheduled LinkedIn Live. Wow, that's a lot. Regularly scheduled LinkedIn Live. I did that live on Press So, you know, for something like that, what I hope to do is lock in that schedule. You know me. Fourth Friday of every month at 10 o'clock, it's going to be a LinkedIn Live on this particular subject. And then you've got rotating experts that come through. And as you get success with that, then you can add the third Friday and the second, where you kind of back it out. And you also get it like old school network TV, where you, know, you think of must see TV, for lack of a better term. And just if you get your audience to recognize, I know that it's going to be healthcare specific cybersecurity on. The third, third Friday, Friday of the month. They're, they're probably, probably not going to remember it like that, that, but they're just going to know Four Scouts doing something on, on Friday's at 10. And then with the podcast, same type of thing, thing that, that one, one, unfortunately, is a lot. It's mainly contingent on getting a guest book. You know, the way that my show works, works they're, they're long form NPR style interviews. So, so if, if I can't get the guest in place, it can disrupt the schedule where it's not necessarily dropping every Monday. What I was doing, Current um, name of the podcast is known as Security Podcast. Previously, it was Insecurity. And when I was doing Insecurity, we had standard drops of every month. And it would be different times of day sometimes. But uh, ideally, you get everything chopped and uploaded and ready to go. And then it's at you know, like 9 a.m. Eastern time, and you got it for the day. And the idea is you want to have it in the can so you can have those stuff on a routine. But sometimes, News breaks, and so you, so you got to do that. that. That's the worst. Is if you've got something really, really good that you recorded on Thursday, it's ready to drop on Monday, and then some security event happens over the weekend that mm-hmm. immediately makes that interview out of date. So there is a combination of planning and implementation, but you've got to be able to read and react, and then adjust accordingly. You know, uh, I definitely want to get your take on on personal content instead of like um, creating for for just companies. Because one of the thing is the things that I say is how how can you build your brand, and the reason why it's it's like super important is because I'll give you an example. I have a friend that he had a a he posted on LinkedIn and he thought nothing of it and it went viral in in a way. So that really catapulted him to be a figure in in his space and that took him from not really being known to being known in security and then that led to all the opportunities and it was just that one post and he didn't like i said he didn't think nothing of it he just hey i'm just gonna put this out there because if i could do it anyone else could do it and 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 it was a post on his job and he got this really good job and it just went from Hey, a thousand likes to over a million views, like in a week. Wow. Yeah. So wow. it was that it was that crazy. And that really led him to be in Forbes. And it was just this one post, right? That took him to another level. Do you uh, like for me, I, I I post, but not thinking of, hey, this is going to be something big. It's like to me, if something's interesting and I want to deliver it, 
you know, I, I usually tweet or something like that. But I know people that that are very strategic and try to, to to go viral. So, you know, this friend that I'm talking about, he always now tries to catch that. Hey, can I do it again? Right. Can I can I put something out that's going to hit those numbers? And he's always chasing that. But like I said, I, I always like to hear how people try to brand themselves and and take themselves to another level. And I think a lot of times, you know, for me, it's, it's about being me and not always saying, Oh, I want to put my brand onto another level. Do you, do you find yourself like promoting your brand and, and how do you promote your brand to show what you do? Um, so a lot to unpack there. there. Uh, the The first first one, one, the guy guy who went went viral. viral. Kind of, kind of incidentally, incidentally that, that is the greatest, greatest that's that's definition of a viral. viral. And, and you, you use the perfect, perfect word. If you can try, try to chase, chase the dragon, dragon after that, that every hit you take, take after that is a <clears> lesson. <throat> and, and you're going to end up trying harder to achieve, to achieve something, something that you just naturally, naturally found. found. So, so I think, think authenticity is going to be the key for all of this stuff. Like if you are specifically trying to grab whatever the current hashtag is, there's a value to that. But the more authentic you are, that, that comes to your brain. brain. And, and so, you know, I've, I've got, got a couple of signature things that, that the way that, that I, I do, do my show, I didn't, I didn't start out by you know, yelling trigger, trigger alert, alert to start, start the show. show. I, I, I did, did it one day. day. And then a couple of weeks later, later I remember did it again. Yeah, and, and then it just, just kind, kind of became part of the habit. habit. But, but I think, think for me, I would rather the people know me because they like me and the, the way that I talk about the things that we're talking about, because, you know, there's a lot of pods doing cybersecurity stuff. And we all have the same news that we want to pull from. Um, we don't all have the same relationships as far as the expert person can have on there. But I think that the brand that people will associate with you, oftentimes it's different than the brand you try to build. And if it's something where we do ever have to go back outside again, if you have carefully crafted this brand and then you meet people in person and you aren't that, there's a risk. And you know, the, the best, best thing possible is you have, have a guest on the show, or you know, like, like me, I, I do a lot of on street interviews and these types of things. Mm-hmm. And the greatest thing is after you finish, you know, like, like a, say, a six minute video, you have something that you chat, and that in person for you. So I've got emails and set it up, and then she'll say, This was great. I would love to introduce you to my friend Max. And you know, the person that you talked to was already someone important because that's why you wanted her on the show. And now she wants to introduce you to her friend, and it turns out. They're, They're also, also really interesting and important, important, but it's because, because the first person really like the, the, just the nature of how it works. So the more, in my opinion, the more, more that you are on camera or on the mic, the way you are off camera or off the mic, that, that to me is the true road, road to success. success. Yeah, we, yeah, we may not get, get a million views on YouTube in a week, but it's, it's how you build a steady audience. And you know, for um, my version of that, that's much smaller. But when I announced that I was leaving my previous company on LinkedIn, in, in 10, 10 days, days, I had 11,000 11, views just, just on, a, on a on a post on LinkedIn, LinkedIn saying, thank, thank you for my time. time. These are you work with these people, you know, blah, blah, blah. blah. I, I, I didn't, didn't write the Odyssey or anything, or anything. But, but it makes you realize how many people you have reached because suddenly, I don't know 11,000 people, I don't want to know, blah, 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 blah. But, but they, they wanted, wanted to see what was happening. happening. And so, so that, that shows the type, type of content that I've been creating and people I've been working with had some impact that people were paying attention. Give me one second. I'm getting a little feedback <clears throat> from the audience. Um, they, the they're saying violence. it sounds it sounds like a, a echo coming from your side. But um, let's let's go into some of the questions. Um, Thor, Chris, thank you. He said this is super useful. That's why I'm doing it. I'm I'm happy you find this useful. Um, and then Hema Kumar asks any good resources on cloud security pen testing. I would say definitely go to no starch. Um, uh, there's so many different resources. If, if, if look it up on Amazon, I'm, I'm sure there's some cool pen testing books there for cloud security. Um, try the backers, backers red team. Yes, definitely. I'm, I was on, I was, yeah, I'm in that book. I am in that book. Um, so hopefully, hopefully the audio is better. Let me know, guys. Um, Iris, please let me know. Fill me in. If, if there's still some echo, I'll try to troubleshoot it on my side. 
But um, what what are your plans at Black Hat? You know, it's it's different. The the events are different. What, what do you see? Do you have any plans specific for today or tomorrow? So what, so what I, I wanted, wanted to do coming, coming out, out here, here, and again, it's read react. react. Just, just assume, assume I'm going to say that like 12, 12 more times. Time, so audience, so I hope you don't get tired of it. it. You, you get, get here, here with, with the best intentions. intentions. You know, and I, I, I want to do this on Tuesday, this on Wednesday, this on Thursday. And then all of that gets blown up and you try to rebuild wherever you were. I'm here strictly doing audio. Traditionally, I would get these shows doing, you know, kind of like, Almost, almost like news hits, hits and, and just listen to, to do interviews with the attendees, with uh, some, some of the experts, experts or vendors, just different people to give you a feel for what's happening in the show for the people who can't attend. But then also for, you know, because these shows can be so big, you can't go to everything. So, you know, to be able to talk to you, to be able to talk to, you know, whether you're finding out what's going on in Cloud Security, find a couple of red teams and that sort of thing. So my idea was I wanted to drop two hours. 10, 10 hits each, like 10, 10 tracks, tracks, five to seven minute interviews with experts across the spectrum of people that are here, here in order to really, really get a feel for one, why are we back? Why are we fighting, fighting through all of this nonsense to go gather in a place that you, there, there was already a word the con flu. So, so now, now let's, let's add to that COVID. COVID. But, but, um, but also, also I want to see what are people looking to do? You know, like what have we learned from 19 months of lockdown that when we do go back, when we do return to the office, where have we, seen improvements that we can make based on what we've been doing. And we can all talk to each other about this on Zoom all the time, but it's the over-the-shoulder conversations you have when you're sitting here at a restaurant and you overhear somebody, and you mean, at least I do, because we know it's like, hey, man, do you mind if I ask you? And pick that up. So it's like, you get a real feel for the zeitgeist when you are in the middle of it, and you hear, you start to separate the signal from the noise and figure out what are people really here to do. In the past, it was to come and throw down in Vegas. The people that are here this year, I think, really want to be here. They want to be at Black Hat and they be at DEF CON for the learning part of it. And that's where I'm super curious. It's like, what's next? What's the, the next technology that's hot? Yeah, for me, I, I, I think being at Black Hat, DEF CON, it's all, all about the hallway con, those conversations that, you know, if I'm, there's been so many times that I've gone to dinner and had conversations about some issue that I was working on and said, oh man, I can't wait until I go home to go ahead and tackle what I, the problem that I was just having. And usually, usually my lunch and dinner is booked from Tuesday to Friday, just with researchers. We're not talking about business or anything, or, you know, we're talking about pure research. What is the coolest? thing to look at and and that is what i miss that's why i love going to to conferences and i wish i could go ahead and 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 even those like small parties back then right there they used to be having these hotel room parties where i could remember i hope virus is watching this i would always catch him and we would just go into the corner for a half hour conversation you know what's the coolest thing i'm doing and we would go back and forth. And those are the yep. things I miss about being at conferences or seeing someone I haven't seen in a year and like, hey, I seen this tweet that that, you know, this research that you did. Dig can you let me know? And they're like, Yeah, let me let you know because I couldn't publish this because it was too iffy, but this is what I know. And those behind, like I said, behind the curtains, having those deep conversations is what I miss the most. Well, if you talk I, I about having your, 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 your lunch is booked, booked Tuesday through Friday, Friday you, you can all get those lunches booked from, from, from 10 to 3, and yeah. the dinners from 6 to midnight. midnight. Yeah. I, got I got a, a somebody, somebody get up on the signal, I didn't see it until this morning, because I was up to bed, but, but uh, uh, you know, it was like, like almost midnight, and he's like, hey man, I'm looking for some dinner, where are you? I'm just sleeping for an hour, I get up early, I'm going to be ready to do this, so. Yeah, yeah. It, it, all, all of that, that stuff, and then also that shout, shout out to B-Sides. Hopefully, Hopefully B-Sides will be, be back, back live next, next year. year. That, that was something that I went to my first one a few years ago and met so, so many incredible people, people that, that don't come to Black Hat, or at least they don't come into the, the, the vendor hall. So, so yeah, these are the real boots on the ground people that just like you all the way conversations. Just standing there while everyone's waiting in line to get into the thing. Shout out to B-Sides. How many guests can you get Yeah, shout out to B sides. I, I, I always track and, and go over there and hang out. Ha, shout out to Hans. Hans always books a room over there. And I usually crash one day uh, with him. 
But yeah, those are those are the things I miss. This is why like conferences are so important. And a lot of people that haven't gone to conference or or for me, I've been going since DEF CON 8 and I missed last year and I think DEF CON 10, right? But every year I would go there and I absolutely love the conversations, you know, being around like-minded people and being around people that genuinely love the game that are not just just doing this to get a paycheck they really live this meaning when it's when they're not working they're still grinding and doing stuff and i have a laundry list of people that that do that and it's about that love and i learned so much in one week that that's why they call it the the hacker summer camp right it's the summer camp so you know I had someone reach out to me yesterday and said, Hey, I, th- I know you're going to be here. I seen your tweet and, and stuff like that. Um, why don't you come out and hang out with, um, some of the people that we came out with, we got a cabana and stuff like that. And those are the invites that I love that we have a really good time and you really go deep into research that, you know, you're doing. And that's what I miss. What, are, are you setting anything up for this week or is it like everything is like ad hoc? Um, um, I have I a have lot of stuff, stuff scheduled, scheduled and, and that's, that's the thing, thing when, you, when, you, when it's read and react, react time, it's like, like you know, we're, we're going to meet at 3 o'clock at, at this, this point, point and, and then, then something that may happen to either, either one, one of us that are going to be there and it's good news that the, the only reason you ever want to dump out of something is because you got something better or something that is present we have to do right at that moment. So yeah, I've got a lot of stuff laid out, a lot of really interesting people I want to talk to. Ideally, Ideally, I had planned planned on getting getting back back to the room, room, doing doing the edits, adding music, music, dropping dropping it overnight, so so we've got got Black Hat 2021 on Thursday, Volume 2 on Friday. Friday. Uh, Whether whether we could hit hit those goals, goals, maybe not. We may drop one or two next week. But it's just the thing is to be ready for what happens. And one thing, what we're talking about, what I miss about previous things. I'm also really curious to see what these are going to look like next year. What, what, what's going to be now? And it's one thing that I really appreciate about the different B-sides I've been to, because the ones I've been to are like opposite either this show or RSA in San Francisco or InfoSec Europe, because those are like really lean versions of this, even like what Black Hat used to be X amount of years ago. So you know, as we see what comes next, do we need as much of whatever particular nonsense has been built into these things before? There's some glorious boots out here. Shout out to Seth at one boot. It is Man, I seen it. I was like, what? It, it, it it's, it's something out of, out of anime. anime. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's ridiculous, ridiculous in, in, in the best possible, possible way. way. And, and um, but, but yeah, yeah it's, it's like, like where do we step, step up, up and what things? things and is, is there some retro, retro tools, tools, some awesome, awesome stuff, stuff that, that we used to do that we decided to change because our competitor did this? this. And, and instead of playing catch up with that, it's like you know what was awesome is those types of follow conversations we have. How can we focus on doing that the next time around because we got so much benefit from this particular strange. For show back. Yeah, I think really RSA is going to be that that show that everyone starts going back to. But, you know, I'm Matt. Thank you so much for joining. I know everyone live. We're going to be back. We're going to take a coffee break. I'm telling you, you should watch. Come back. Yeah, I'm going to get my coffee. Come back. Watch the next person on that that is going to blow everyone away. And I hope they do just like Matt did is angel Gomez. He is a VC partner at Oak Hills and he invests in cybersecurity and we're going to have an amazing conversation on how you get your startup funded by, by asking him. I know there's going to be a lot of questions there, so I'm super excited to have a Matt. Thank you. I, I just wanted to give you flowers on live, live, you know, stream because for the last month or two, we've been having conversations every week. You've, you've constantly helped me. And, you know, especially this week that, that I couldn't make it, you know, I I relied on you a lot and I appreciate you and I I will return that favor. I'll make sure I get you a (laughs) bottle of coffee. If you want a little Starbucks coffee or tequila, whatever you decide. Thank you. Thank you so much, Matt. 
Absolutely, Marco, anytime. And uh, you guys, this is the best show in the business. The guest he has are amazing. So make sure that you are following Hack Thank Chat you. across all of the stuff. stuff. Yes. yes, follow us at Hack Chat. Go to Sentinel One, look us up, Hack Chat. We stream on all platforms. And we're going to take a coffee break and come back. Thank you. Until 15 minutes.